I had not a clue. I usually check the songs that you guys are going to sing, and I, you know, I, I, I am that I am like that. I'm, I check and you know make make, make sure that I know who's going to be participating, and I didn't connect the dots unworthy of it all. But this morning, I was recapping some notes, and I actually put it in my notes, Revelation seven verses 9 and 10 and when you begin to sing that song i'm like really and this is i'm going to read you this this verse it says after this i saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the lamb they were clothed in white robes and they held palm branches in their hands and they were shouting with a great roar Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living beings. And they fell before the throne with their faces to the ground and worshipped God. They sang, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength belong to our God forever and ever. Amen. I don't know if you realize, but we will be in the company of angels one day singing, Worthy is the Lamb. And everything that we do in this place is in preparation for what's to come. And as I'm thinking, next Wednesday, is it this Wednesday or next Wednesday? Can somebody throw me a date for ensayos? Is this the 25th? I don't even know what day it is. I'm sorry. Somebody help me out. What what day is this Wednesday? The twenty second. Thank you. Twenty second. Thank you. Help your pastor, please. I'm I'm just I'm just overtaken right now. I don't even know what day it is. I'm just on the twenty second in the main campus. We're gonna have ensayos. Ensayos is like in in English. It's like a rehearsal or a practice. And all we do on that Wednesday at 7 p.m. is we just praise and worship God. And you may say, Pastor, I don't speak Spanish. It don't matter. It don't, I know that's grammatically not right. It doesn't matter, okay? But just come and join us. And you may not know the words, but you'll know the spirit. And you'll be able to worship with us and get a taste of what heaven is going to be like. So... I'm inviting you to join us on Ensayos on Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the main auditorium. And um, I wrote also in my notes, there are some things in your life that you need God's intervention. It may be a disease. It may be a child. It may be a, a child that is living in rebellion. Maybe it's someone that you know that is going through a, fi a financial struggle. Uh, maybe it is a marriage that is like I like I prayed, you know, at the brink of dissolving. Um, I have a word that the Lord put in my heart, and I want to be obedient. That with God, anything is possible. I don't think I heard a single amen. Man, with God, anything is possible. There may be a time in your life where you need to believe in that God. A God that is not contained by your understanding of who he is. Sometimes God will want to do something in your life that it, that, that it goes beyond your level of understanding. And all you need to do is trust that he is the one doing the good work in your life. We may not be that many in numbers right now, but I have a deep-seated conviction in my heart that I am laying a foundation for what's to come in the years to come. Is that I want people, I want to surround myself with people that love God and they love the Word of God and who are willing to believe that God will take us to places we never ever even dreamed of, even in the language we, it wasn't our own, yours truly. Every day that I preach, every Sunday that I preach to you in English, it's a challenge to me. Because my brain is spinning so fast in Spanish that I need to slow it down to, and do it in English. 
and to speak coherently. But I know that I, I'm, I'm invested in this because I know that God has called me to lay a foundation in this place. And I am working with a younger crowd. I don't know why, because I'm not very patient. I'm quite impatient. And the, the closer you get to me and the closer you work with me, you'll see that I'm in your face kind of guy. I know it, it doesn't look like that, does it? Just ask my kids. I, I confront and I have, I, I don't know how to translate this. Well, I, I am not going to translate it. I, but I have no filters sometimes. And if I love you, I will tell you what, what you need to be told in love. Because I always want to be obedient to believing the best that God has in store for your life. Would you rather me be dishonest with you and tell you, no, I, everything is okay, Chris? No. I need to tell you the truth. But I will do the truth in love. But ultimately, all the young people that I see in this place, I want to lay a foundation of commitment, of service, of thinking like kingdom people. Because God has big dreams, not your dreams, his dreams for our church which is not our church, it's his church. Amen. We've been in this series called God's Promises, and God promises to be faithful, and we are to be faithful. God promises to give us his wisdom as we need his direction and insight into every area of our lives. But the first verse that I want to read this morning as I'm getting into the word of God, it is Romans 1513, and it, it says like this. It's not in your outlines. It's not in your screens, but I'm going to read it to you out of the Word of God. And it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Just let that sink in. There's two things that I see in this verse. And there's two emotions, or you can call them emotions. There is joy and peace. And think about those two emotions. We'll label them as emotions as you live your everyday life. If every single day you have an overflow of joy and peace, nothing can move you. And if we understand what the Apostle Paul is telling us, is that hope comes as an overflow of what God is doing in our lives. We live in a world that is disconnected from God. Just so look around. Look at the meat. Uh, I, I can't even tell you to turn on your TVs because most of you don't even watch TV. Some of the younger people will say, well, what's TV like? But look at social media. There's a world that is disconnected from God. There is no sense of identity, of true identity, in what God calls us to be. There, we have stepped out of bounds from what God intended us to live by. The parameters of our life as human beings, the human experience, every single issue that you and I face, there's a prescription to come through in the word of God. But we have fallen into this rut of thinking like the world that is connected from God. But there's a, there's a universal purpose of God. And that is to reconcile the world back to him. Because we are not living in God's original plan right now. We're living in a world that had become distorted with sin, corrupted by sin. Because of a fallen nature. Now let me tell you. Because this may sound like. Well it's kind of a sad message. You know we started really good. On a high note. And now you're telling us all this sad stories. And this sad state of humankind. But the hope that we all need. It is only found in Jesus Christ. I, I, I truly would like you to grasp this, not in your brain, but in your heart. 
The only true and living hope that we have and that we need it is found in Jesus Christ. Hope allows me to anchor myself to something that is greater than the circumstances that I am living right now. If you think that your world is steady, one day that world can come crumbling down really quick. And you need a hope that is greater than your circumstances to be the anchor that your holds gets a hold of. Hope reminds me that the God of creation has placed me in this specific time with a specific purpose. That's the promise of the God that we serve. That every single one of us that is in this auditorium and for those that are watching us online. That God has given us and placed us in this place with a purpose. And that purpose is deeply connected to the hope of glory that has been revealed in us. Like I told you, we've heard about faithfulness. We've heard about wisdom. Both are attributes of God that are to be conveyed to us as His children. But God's faithfulness and God's wisdom starkly contrast with what's happening in the world. People nowadays think they're so smart, but they've become foolish. And the Word of God tells us that. Read Corinthians. The, what, what the world thinks is intelligent and smart, it really is foolishness before the eyes of God. We see a world that is in spiritual bankruptcy. I don't know if you've noticed. There is spiritual bankruptcy in the world. And, and the world has lost its sense of hope and common sense. What was once wrong, we call it right. And what is right, we call it wrong. Church, we, we are the answer to the problems of the world. Why are you guys... We are the answer, Chris. Joe Biden cannot fix what's going on. Ne neither could Donald Trump, okay? <laughs> Not without God. If you look to the government to be the source of hope and purpose for your family, you are in deep trouble. If you're looking for your teachers in school to give your children a sense of purpose and meaning, you are in trouble. God promises to give us purpose that is anchored in the hope of glory. Wishful thinking is not hope. Wishful thinking is good intentions are not going to get you anywhere. There, there needs to be more. Wishful thinking is just wishful thinking. There needs to be something deeper. And a lot of us ignore conditions that we fail to understand. They will not go away on their own. From the Garden of Eden, from the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve failed and they disobeyed God, God began to devise a plan to redeem mankind unto himself. And he had a plan through a people. And through that people bring a savior. And that Savior, listen, executed the plan flawlessly. He said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. And he went to the cross and he paid for the sins of the world, including, including yours and mine. And but he didn't only die, but on the third day he resurrected from the dead. And in his resurrection, he gave us the resurrection power so we could overcome the sins that have plagued us and break the chains that kept us a slave for so many years. God has a plan. And my friends, by the power of the Holy Spirit, now we are commissioned to go into the world and tell them about God's universal purpose to redeem mankind unto himself. And where does, it, where does this fit in with, with, with this morning's message? You are part of that plan. God is inviting you to be a part of His perfect plan if you follow the purpose that He has for your life. Each person 
is created by God for a unique and important purpose. I truly believe that God called me from my mother's womb. And I was talking to Luis on Friday, and I was telling him I'm a very timid person by nature. You may not believe that. You, I know some people say, no, you're not timid. I am very timid by nature. I am shy. But I know that one day I woke up to the purpose of God in my life. When I yielded everything that I had and everything that I was to him. And I said, God, wherever you can use me, use me. And the last place that I thought I was going to be able to serve in his kingdom was behind the pulpit. But here I am. Living a daring life. And trusting a God that can use anything and everyone. Because he has a specific purpose for your life. Now, following your call, following that calling, it doesn't mean that you have to sell everything and move to the other side of the world, in Africa or in South America. It doesn't not necessarily mean that. If the Lord calls you to do that, absolutely. That was my dream. I came to this country because I wanted to be a medical doctor. I wanted to become a pediatrician and go into Africa into the missions field. My parents spent a great deal of time in the missions in Mexico. I wanted to do that. But all of a sudden, God said, I have different plans for your life. I have a different purpose. And here I am. I'm not a pediatrician, but I'm a doctor of the soul. Okay? So I do something else. In the, in the end, God's purpose was, will always prevail. Now, your calling, though, your calling fits within the vision and the mission of the body of Christ where he has placed you. That, what, what does that mean, Pastor? It means that if you have a gift and you have a purpose that God has placed inside of you and you are serving in CFC, there's something for you to do. In this place because God placed you in this body. You don't have to go to another church. If you are here listening to this message. God has a purpose for you in CFC. Could it be auditioning for the band? Could it be serving with the ushers? Could it be working as a guest? I have no idea. Could it be working with the children? I told you, we're starting this church. We're close to two years. We're getting really close to our second year anniversary. And all we have done is lay a foundation. But we cannot leave this at only a foundation. We need to start building up the walls. And we need to start doing the drywall and the electrical and the plumbing, right? Because this is a building. Or if, if, we, if you want to see it as a body, which we're going to look at right now in a few minutes, there's more. But there's something for you to do. Amen. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 12 verses 12 through 20. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one, but part, of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. Are we all following along? Got it? Get it? Get it? Thank you. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would their body be? As it is, there are many parts, but... One body. The body is a unit that is made up of many parts. People from all walks of life. As I am 
seeing people in this auditorium, I see people from different races, different ages, different walks of life. But I'm going to tell you one thing. We are all one in Christ. And, and we as a church, listen, we need to embrace that people that are different than us will come and worship in this place. We need, to, we need to have a change of, of mentality that we need to expect that people that are different than us will come to their place and be a part of this body. Each part of the body wants and needs to find a purpose. Don't know how long you've been a Christian. Maybe a year, maybe two years, Ricardo. I, I don't know. But there will be a moment in your life where you sense this dissatisfaction. Where you sense, what am I doing? There will be a day when you wake up in the middle of the night and you are going to ask yourself, what am I doing for God? Have you ever, I know it happened to me in my mid-40s. I woke up in the middle of the night thinking, what have I done with my life? Looking at my children, looking at my wife. What have I accomplished? Not only in my life, but what have I accomplished in God's kingdom? This sense of dissatisfaction many times makes you unhappy. And I am proposing to you that unhappiness can have a positive effect in your life. Because what it can do, if you are honest to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, it will channel that feeling into God's purpose and calling for your existence. If you are sensitive, you will realize that God is giving you gifts and talents, right? Some of them are spiritual, some of them are natural. But either way, they were given to you for the sake of the benefit of the people of God. Throughout the Bible, we see God using ordinary people to do kingdom work. Now... To all kinds of people from the different places in the world, we all are part of the universal body of Christ. I mean, we have brothers and sisters in Christ right now that are praising God undercover in China, in Asia. There are people that they cannot come to church like you and I and put on their cowboy boots and put on their really nice clothes. They have to be undercover. But they are brothers and are sisters. And they are part of the body of Christ. They are serving their God-given purpose in that part of the world as we are serving God's purpose in this place of the world. The Apostle Paul clearly said it. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different types of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of work, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now, when you serve God and you give everything to God, listen, don't expect pay or rewards from people. Luis, if you play for God, don't expect people to say, oh, you sing so beautiful. You do so great. Sometimes people will ignore you. They won't even say thank you. Lalo? Now we have two Lalos. I, I realize that. You know, they were, I think they were talking about you. Right? But we have another Lalo playing now. The, to the Lalos. If, we nev if, if Abel never was to say thank you, you keep doing it. Because you're in good company. Remember when Jesus healed the ten lepers? How many did he heal? Ten. How many came back and said thank you? One. People will be ungrateful even when you do the right thing. Remember a few months ago we, we, we spent a whole sermon talking about people being ungrateful to us. And, and doing the right thing it, it can get tiring. That's why you need the power of the Holy Spirit. When you function in your purpose, in your calling, you're not doing it for the glory and for the rewards of people. You're doing it for God. 
And nowadays, we need to realize that we need to reach out to a community that is disconnected from God. But listen, how many churches in America today, think about this, and let's, let's have a, an honest look in the mirror. How many churches in America today have, in, have built up walls where if you don't look like us, if you don't speak like us, if you don't dress like us, you're not part of this club. The room is very quiet. We are called not to build walls. We are called to tear down those walls and build bridges. And reconcile the world. There's a passage. And for the sake of time, I cannot read you the whole passage. But if you read it on your own, write this down. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 17 through the 20th. We have been given an assignment, and that is to reconcile the world back to God. Now, does that mean, hold on, hold your horses, because I need to tell you this. It doesn't mean that we will water down the message of the gospel. Okay? Let's make that very clear. We will never, ever compromise the true message of the gospel of Christ. Woe unto me, said Paul, if I don't preach the gospel. But you do your part and let the Holy Spirit convince and convict people of their need. All you have to do is do your purpose and be a part of the body. Now, your purpose, listen, your purpose will empower you. When you live out the purpose of God in your life, it will empower you. I think I've told you more than, on, on more than one occasion. Why, why do you need the power of God if you're not doing anything for God? Think about that. If you're not doing anything for God, why would you need the power of God? Why would you need signs and wonders if you're sitting in your seat and not moving and not doing anything? Come on. The moment you give one step forward, then God will download His power into your life. I know that's not a very religious word, but I'm, I just used it. He will give you a download of His power when you start moving in the purpose that God has for your life. He, if you read your Bible in Acts 1.8, and I'm completely off subject, but I'll return to it. In the next hour, I'll come back to it. When He commissioned the church to go out, He told them, don't go anywhere until you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Am I, am I telling am I making up my story? Or am I telling you the Bible? I'm, I'm giving you the word of God. And I'm hoping it fits into your theology. Because if it doesn't, you need to make your theology congruent with the word of God. But when we follow our purpose, God will give us the power we need to live it out. This, on Friday, I walked with someone, and the whole week I had not spoken to anybody about Jesus. And I said, God, the whole week has come, it's gone by, and I haven't talked to anybody about you. And I said, that's not, no bueno. And I was walking right behind this man, and, and I'm, I look, Lord, I go, it's Friday, and it's 3.30 p.m., and I'm, I, I haven't done anything. God, what's happening? And I walked with Umberto, and I sensed that he was very tired. And I literally, walking behind him, I go, Umberto, you're tired, aren't you? He goes, yeah, Juanito, I'm really tired. And I go, may I ask what's happening? And he began to share his story. Mom is sick, and every day he's been going to TJ so he can be with his mom that is sick in the hospital. 
And when he, when, listen, when I was able to listen to his story, it allowed me to tell him my story. Do you see how important that is? Have you ever wondered maybe why people don't want to hear your story because you're not willing to listen to their story? Remember, I'm talking about building bridges. I'm talking about purpose. I'm talking about living out your faith. What you do here and you receive every Sunday, Patrick, it's not for you. I love you, bro. But you need to let it come out. It cannot, you cannot be a lake. You cannot be just taking it in. You got to let it flow out. The Bible says that when his spirit would come, it would be like, it would be like a lake of water. No. It would be like rivers of living water. When you live out the purpose of God in your life, there will be a, a, a flow of the river of God flowing through your life. And that's what I want. And that's what, that's what God's purpose is for us. Let me, get in, let me get into this. Why is it important for us to realize that nobody is a nobody in the body of Christ? Because you may be thinking, Pastor, I'm so little. I, I'm, I'm, I'm young. No. Nobody is a nobody in the body of Christ. Number one, let me remind you why you are important. And number one is because you're a part of the body. You're a part of the body. Whether you're a toe. I personally would not like to be a toe, but whether you're a toe, a belly button, an ear, a bold spot in the body, you know. Oh, I know, right? You're part of our body. You're no less important than any part of the body in Christ. Romans 12, 4 and 5, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ... So in Christ, we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to all the others. Can you imagine everyone being a preacher? Can you imagine everyone being an usher? Can you imagine everyone being a band member player? We need, we need, we need you. Whatever you may be. A toe, an arm, an elbow, an eye, a tongue. We need you in this body. Number two, you're important because you are different. Because you are different. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We may be different, but if we are under the Lordship of Christ, Following the teachings of Christ, we are one body. So you're important because you're a part of this body. You're important because you are different. I value your difference. And sometimes we don't understand people that are different, right? But we still value them. The church, like I told you earlier, we need to realize that we are to reconcile the world. In fact, when I told you about that passage in 2 Corinthians, we are called to be, listen, ambassadors. I like that word. The, uh, oh, oh, oh. I, I am an ambassador of the kingdom of God. Wow. Sounds really important. You know why it sounds important? Because it is important. That you are an ambassador. That means that wherever you go, you represent the principles and the values of the kingdom of God. And you know that in the kingdom of God, there is no lack. In the kingdom of God, there is no need. There's, there's something special when you truly represent the kingdom of God. And the third reason, the third reason why, why we are all important, the third reason is because we need each other. 
I need Dama to set up the stage just as much as I need Isai to help me tell me that I am to finish my sermon in the next five minutes. You are important. More than you can think of. You can put away your notes. We're going to wrap it up right now. I, I don't buy into this worldly philosophy and mentality. Oh, you have so much value and self-esteem and build up your self-esteem. I'm not in that spectrum of people that believe and do that. But I do acknowledge that until you realize how valuable you are, you will not be able to live out the God-given purpose for you where He has placed you. So many of us have sabotaged, do you like that word? Our calling because we fail to realize God's purpose in our life. And we think we have no value. I get angry when I see somebody with huge potential and they, they squander away their life. It, it just, it makes my blood boil. Oh, it gets me hot. When I see people that have so much potential and they just squander it all away. And this morning, church, I'm telling you, you're valuable. How valuable are you so much that the King of Kings and Lord of Lords decided to give His life on the cross for you. He said, I'm going to go out and, and I'm going to put it all on the line because I love the world. So this morning as I am wrapping up, I want you to be completely transparent and ask yourself, am I living out the purpose of God for my life. Every talent, every skill, every resource, everything that I have, am I, am, I, am I putting it all out there for God? Or am I just living day by day without purpose? Am I just following the routine and keeping up with whatever we do every single day? If that is you, stop. Stop. Think about how much He loves us. And that everything that He came to do for us is not in vain. Wake up. Wake up to the reality of the God who created you with purpose. Ephesians 4, 14 through 16. It tells us what happens when the church is firing in all cylinders when the church is really living out its purpose. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head that is Christ. From Him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Look to your neighbor and tell them, I need you. Abe, Patrick, you didn't say it to anybody. Joseph, tell someone, I need you. I need you. 
Ayo.